All right, so to do a KCL at uh, E2, uh, let's start with the current uh, leaving this node. Remember, my usual habit is to uh, sum the nodes leaving a node. So the current heading in this direction will be E2 minus E1 divided by R3, okay? So it will be current going left from that node will be E2 minus E1 divided by R3 or multiplied by G3. Then the uh, current going up will be E2 minus v naught times g4 and uh, the current leaving the node and going down will be e2 uh, times g5 have i missed anything aha there is a current here that's coming into the node and so therefore the current leaving the node is minus i1 and all of that sums up to zero there you have it so i've written kcl for the two nodes and uh, I've substituted the device laws as I've been writing it, so I don't have this intermediate current variable. So just stare at the beauty of this. Notice that I have two equations, uh, one and two, and I have two variables, uh, E1 and uh, E2, two unknowns and two equations, and, uh, and that's it. Okay, so let me go on to step four of the node method. Um, the step four of the node method is simply to go ahead and solve for the, uh, the node voltages, uh, E1 and uh, E2. So uh, I have my two equations, uh, which reflect the KCL at uh, node E1 and KCL at, at E2. So uh, now it's simply uh, uh, you know, juggling around with some math and uh, uh, trying to collect all the coefficients of uh, E1 and those of E2, collect them all, and I just write them a little cleanly. So let me move uh, all the constant terms to the right-hand side, and I will move uh, the variables to the unknowns to the uh, left-hand side. So let me start with uh, E1, okay? So notice that uh, E1, E1 uh, is multiplied by G1, so I write that down, multiplied by G3, so I write that down, and multiplied by G2, so I write that down too. So I get uh, E1 times G1 plus uh, G3 plus G2. And then I collect the terms in E2, and there is only one here, and which is minus G3. And the constant terms are here, uh, V0, G1, and I'm going to move that to the right-hand side and write that down as uh, V0, G1. For the next set of steps, uh, I go ahead and do uh, uh, E1. For the next equation, I get uh, E1 uh, minus G3. And then uh, for E2, I go ahead and get a, a G5, and I get a uh, G4, and I get a G3. So it's a G3, G4, and a G5. And uh, I can move the constant terms, which is uh, V0, G4, and I1 to the right-hand side. And in this case, uh, they both become positive as they move to the right, and I get a uh, I1 here. Okay, there you go. So uh, I end up with uh, two equations and uh, two unknowns. And uh, notice I have uh, E1 times something plus E2 times something equals a constant. And then again, an E1 times something plus E2 times something is another constant. So I have two equations and two unknowns. And see how remarkably simple this is. Now, this is uh, basic high school math to solve a pair of uh, simultaneous equations in order to get the answer. Um, let me just go ahead and uh, uh, just to be uh, complete here, uh, let me go ahead and uh, complete it for you. So supposing in step number four, you've gone and solved for the node method, and uh, by solving the node method, uh, you get the values of uh, E1 and E2. Okay, so let's say you've gone and solved the simultaneous equations from uh, step four, and you have E1 and E2. Then to complete your circuit analysis, you need to find the branch voltages. And so uh, you can go ahead and find all the VIs and uh, IIs. So uh, in this case, uh, one of my branch voltages is uh, V1, I1. So I'll just do uh, a couple of quick examples uh, just to show you uh, it's pretty simple. So what is V1 here? Well, let me pause and uh, have you do it. 